Um, I get. I mean, I'd never, because I didn't go to film school or anything. I'd never really done any shorts or let alone anything this long. And then um, a couple last year, I did last year or the year before, I did coming up on Channel Four, which is like half um, half hour broadcast, so like twenty four minutes. And prior to that, I the longest thing I'd ever done was five minutes. I was so nervous about doing something that long, and then I went straight from that to this, which is eighty six minutes. So it was a, it was a daunting leap. Um, I just thought it was really funny and um, I, th I think it's very honest and truthful um, and it's a celebration of female friendship which I like because you don't see that very often and, uh, but mainly I just thought it was funny. It was really just this like fun girly environment and there was, it wasn't, there was no kind of clashes of characters at all. It was nice the way that the script is structured meant that Everybody was paired off, so it was kind of like Jared and Jamie, Sheridan and Jamie, Kate and Una, Sarah and Ryan, Bumi and Lashana, Alice and Zara. So everyone had their little pair, and so it was it, that was really nice as well because each of those pairs bonded so much because they spent so much time together, sort of offset. I mean, obviously Sheridan and Jamie knew each other from before, but it made for it was sort of this accidental bonus of of the way that the script was structured that we had these sort of lovely little pairs of friends, Bob wandering around, so it was really nice. So yeah, so Rosie is my bestest friend, and um, we, uh, it was just kind of like, oh, I'm doing this film that has an all-female cast and is set in a nightclub, and um, my best mate happens to be in an, the lead singer in an all-female rock band, so it was fantastic. So we brought them on, and they um, not only appear in the film and have got loads of their songs in the film, um, but also they kind of have five songs, which is like the beginning, the end, and then the three junctures in between. So it's like they, they, they are kind of the structure of our film in a way. And then they also curated the soundtrack with us, which was kind of between them and myself and Ben Jordan, the editor, just trawling SoundCloud, trying to find artists that we liked. Um, and it's, it's one of the things that I'm most proud of about the film, and it's, it's all, bar one song that we paid for, it's all young, unsigned acts, largely out of London, and it's like a real celebration of young music in in London and I feel like because with the aesthetic of the club we really wanted to create that feeling of going clubbing in London because we kind of do this kind of grungy grimy scruffiness in a very particular way and I feel like London on film is often this kind of rose tinted sort of Richard Curtis Woody Allen view of a kind of older London and it was sort of I was really pleased that we had the music to match up to the aesthetic of the kind of younger London that we wanted to put on screen. Also, because it's a set in a nightclub, there's literally wall-to-wall -wall music from the first frame to the last frame. It's like there's never a silent moment in terms of the music. And I never wanted it to be just kind of a generic bass coming through the walls. I wanted every track to be there for a reason and to work with that particular scene. And so. Oh, it's, do, you know what, do you know why it's so hard? It's because, because there aren't that many scenes, like... I feel like if I pick one, it's a disservice to some of the other girls who are so, like, do you know what I mean? Because it's like, I love Sheridan and Jamie's scene, the anal sex scene, but then I love the fancy dress scene, and then I love the, like, the Ryan and Sarah's sex scene, and so it's like, but then, like, the end, like, but then the, but the dancing bit makes me, like, well, like, so it's like, I don't know. I feel like there's, all those girls are so, was, like, they all have such great moments, so I don't want to pick one, because it does a disservice to the others. I don't know if I can speak for like people wanting to see them. I know that they're, like more girls go to the cinema than boys, so you'd think that there'd be more women on the screen. <laughs> but there aren't, and it's it's quite sad that there aren't as many films like this. But that's the way it is. <laughs> makes us unique, I suppose. <laughs> I will say though that having like been involved with and make made this film like. The, not, the stories that people come to me with of their own experiences in nightclub toilets, because obviously like it pr prompts people to, um, co to come to you with their own tales. Like Every single one has been so much more shocking than anything that happens in this film. You know, when you're kind of like, wow, like we're really tame. <laughs> like, all sorts goes on. But yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have a story. When we were in the studio at Three Minutes, I mean, it, there was a point where I was like, I don't think I'll do blue again for a while, because you spend a long time in the blue box um, but 
Yes, but it's, we had a very dynamic set build, so there were always like walls coming off, cubicles coming out, mirrors coming out, cameras going through camera traps, like going up on going up above and through sinks and through toilets. So we we tried to keep it interesting. Um.